I'm Steve, uh, sober date May 1st, 2021. I started drinking when I was probably 13 years old. Um, just, you know, getting into our parents' liquor cabinets. I liked drinking because it would um, kind of got me, it, it changed me, it turned me into a different person. Uh, I was kind of quiet, I was kind of shy, um, but when I would drink, it kind of loosened me up, got me out of my shell. My senior year in high school, I remember uh, where I was at when I got the, uh, the painkillers. I remember who it was, who introduced it to me. I took a couple, it was Percocets, you know, Percocets or Vicodin at the time, and it was, man, I fell in love. Opiates didn't become a problem for me until I was probably about 20 years old. You know, I only did it on like special occasions, you know, if we were going to the movies that weekend, or if there was a party coming up, you know, I would save it for those special occasions because I wanted to enjoy it. It slowly transitioned into, I was doing them every day. And I was always the person that said, I'm only gonna do painkillers because I know where they're coming from. Well, a friend talked me into trying fentanyl. And then I went from doing just painkillers to just fentanyl and no painkillers because it was cheaper and it was a lot stronger. April 29th, I, uh, I OD'd three different times. Um, I nar got Narcan four times. I almost got hit by a semi truck, all in a matter of about five and a half hours. My fiance said she, she didn't encourage me. She said, you're going to treatment now. And I was so out of it that I just went along with it. And I knew, I think subconsciously, like I knew I knew I had a problem. Like I've, I've known I had a problem, but I always thought that, you know, I don't need help. I can stop on my own because I've stopped on my own before. I've gone months without doing anything. It was just, I knew subconsciously it was, I needed help or I was gonna die and I almost did die. April 29th is by far the best day that, that of my life because it legitimately saved my life because that's the day that I came here to RCA. You know, the nice thing about RCA is the facility is outstanding. The beds are super comfortable. We got TVs in your room. You know, the food's outstanding. You know, it's just, it's extremely comfortable here. So they take all that uncomfortable ability out of the fact, you know, out of the situation. And for me, I could just focus on my recovery. I could just focus on getting better, on, on getting healthy. To me, I, I, there are so many great things about RCA. Um, the, the people, that work here, the staff, uh, is what makes the place as great as it, as it is. Every single person here genuinely cares about each patient. And obviously, it's a job, but they don't treat it like that. They genuinely care and will do anything possible to help the patients here. I went to every single group while I was here for the 30 days. And the reason why I did that is because I was afraid that the group that I missed, that was gonna be the group that somebody said something that was gonna keep me sober. I always heard something or learned something that I sat back and said, huh, man, I needed to hear that. The spiritual group with Olivia. You know, I was, I was not very religious. I was not spiritual at all. The way she talks to people, the way she talks to the patients, you know, she doesn't push anything. She knows what to say, when to say. Um, to every different person. And she's just one of the many employees. I mean, I could talk all day about the RSS staff, you know, how they share things with us because, you know, they have experience in it. They, they've been in our shoes. They know what it's like. You know, everybody's just, they're just regular people. You know, there's regular people here with the sole purpose of trying to save our lives. I, I fully believe that, you know, God doesn't make mistakes, you know, and, and I'm supposed to, I'm where I'm at and this is where I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. There's a reason why I came to RCA. You know, there's a reason why this is my first time in treatment, first rehab center, first time in treatment, and there's a reason why this was the place that I came. God brought me here. You know, my higher power brought me here because this is the place that I needed to be um, to help me stay sober. I would do anything for RCA because of what they've done, not only for myself, but for my family, but for all the other patients that I was in here with. I've developed friendships with other patients in here that um, you know, I, I plan on continuing to have you know, forever. 
and that's something that I'm, I'll be forever grateful for. My life now is, uh, is way so much better. Uh, so much better, you know, I'm, I'm way less stressed. My relationship with my kids and my fiance are way better. My life was in utter, utter chaos uh, before. And now it's, you know, it's just a lot peaceful, a lot more peaceful. Um, it's, just, it's just really, really nice. The person that's struggling, you're not alone. You know, there's millions of people out there that struggle with addiction. We're all, we're all similar, you know, we're all, we're all the same. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter <clears throat> where you come from. Um, you know, addiction doesn't discriminate. It's okay to ask for help. You know, there are people out there that, that want to see people get better. They want to see you get better. You gotta take that leap of faith, you know, cause I've, I truly, truly believe, you know, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And one of the toughest things that any, any of us ha will ever do is ask for help. It, it's okay, you know. People are there to. They know what, what what you're going through. I know what you're going through. You know, I was there. Um, you know, and, and it's okay. You know, it's okay to ask for help.